Psalm 23 A Psalm of David The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, we thank the Lord. Thank the Lord for his grace and his mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you're here with us. Amen. Lord, and you're omniscient. You're omnipresent. You're everywhere all at once. Everywhere and everything. Thank you, Lord. You're in each and every one of the branches' homes right now. Lord God, thank you for your presence. Very grateful. Very grateful. Uh... Hi, how y'all doing? Ah, uh, I know you're busying yourself in the chat, and you're all talking to one no, another. No, no, not really. Nobody's here yet. Hallelujah, here yet. hallelujah. It's early in the morning. Everybody's just waking <laughs> up. Nobody's here yet. Praise the Lord. I was reading, uh, last week actually, I was reading about St. Augustine. And he, he had this psalm engraved on his bedroom psalm 32 that we're going to be going into today and he had it engraved on his bedroom wall so and as he was dying you know he would read it every day he would read it and when he became too weak to read it he would ask his servants and and uh, people who were in the room at the time to to recite it to him and to read this psalm aloud so i want i want us to read this psalm the context of this is if if as augustine is laying dying in bed and he's asking the servants to read this they're not thinking about augustine their master dying believe it or not mm -mm. they are in the midst of right. a very serious siege of the city of carthage right. by a vandal army a germanic army in north africa and as the siege of the city is going on this great saint of god augustine is dying Yes. And I'm this is how the spirit of God works. I'm fairly sure that at if Augustine was asking his servants to read it, he understood that the fear that they had because they were under siege was going to be allayed by them reading the word of God out loud even though mm. it was in, initially mm. for Augustine as he laid down. Yes. Yes. Anyway, Psalm 32 verse 1. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Amen to that. Amen. Blessed is the man against whom the Lord counts no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Right. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of the summer. Selah. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. And I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. That's verse 1. Hallelujah. And we all know that David is the author of this psalm. 
and we know a lot about David. He wrote a lot of the Psalms, not all of them, but but most of them. A, a good portion. A good of portion them. of them. Yeah, and he was this great and great king, and he walked very close to the Lord most of his life. But we also know that he committed adultery and murder, and he he wrote this Psalm out of that what he had done you know and i believe he wrote this psalm to help us as well to know what we can be fully restored you know from and completely forgiven no matter what we've done amen no matter what any of us have done here today and as i was reading that i'm like wow wow lord Lord, this really ministered to me. Ministered to me. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. So, whether we've committed adultery, murder, uh, abortion, you know, whether you've had addictions to alcohol, pornography, whatever that thing is, we can all be forgiven. It's the power of God's repentance that yes. these things could be forgiven. Yes. It boggles our mind, but to think that a Hitler and a Stalin could be forgiven if they came into repentance for the things that they yeah. did. And that, that was a part of my walk before I came back to the Lord. I thought, I've done so many things, you know, lived a promiscuous life. I just was in rebellion. You know, I I thought I had grown so far away from the Lord that I, He would never accept me back. You know, like, look look what I did, Lord. How can I come back? There was shame, guilt, all these things. But David here is saying, no, there is forgiveness. There is forgiveness. Psalm thirty two is one of the seven psalms of forgiveness. You know, uh, there's Psalm six. Psalm 38, Psalm 51, Psalm 102, Psalm 130, and Psalm 143. If you go back and read those, most of those psalms are all on forgiveness. And I bet you you'll find that David wrote most of those psalms, if not all of them. And, but this one in particular has, Paul referred to this one, uh, this psalm, so, so many times, because he quotes it. In Romans 4, 6 to 8. Did you want to read that? We'll start at verse 5. Okay. And to the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Yeah. Just as David also speaks of the blessing of the one to whom God counts righteousness apart from works. Yes. And he quotes, Blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven, whose sins are mm. covered. Blessed Praise is the man God. against whom the Lord will not count his sin. So it's because of Christ and what was done at the cross. Amen. What were you going to say? No, it's all right. No, it's okay. So David wants us to pay attention. You know, um, when we look at the very beginning, we see the phrase uh, contemplation or masculine. If you look in the, the top title, you'll see the word masculine. It's like a contemplation or a masculine. And that's just a musical term to show that the words to follow are extremely important. It's like saying, listen up, everyone. Listen up. Pay attention. David wants us to pay close attention to this instruction so we will understand and embrace the promise of forgiveness god won't hold our sins against us if we confess them that's what this psalm is about confessing our sin to god first we see the happiness of forgiveness then the heaviness of sin and then god helping so if we look at verse 1 in 30, Psalm 32, it says, Blessed is he who, tr whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. And the word blessed here, it, 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 it has such a rich meaning. We could say, how happy, 
how happy is the man or congratulations to the man or or oh the bliss of but it also means to hallow which gives it such a deeper meaning for me anyways or to consecrate and i and i also seen that this word is a plural you know it says oh oh the multiple happiness the boatload of blessings, you could say, to the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are mm. covered, right? It's like that happiness. But, but I just want to clarify something. While the word blessing refers to happiness and all the other things that I mentioned, our goal is God's glory by pursuing what? What are we pursuing most? In our lives it's holiness right not so much happiness it's holiness and I don't know if any of you've uh, watched have you ever seen those clips of um, there was one in particular that I was watching one day and it was Joel Olstein oh, and brother. his wife Victoria oh brother yeah this and, can't be good and she was uh, she was standing beside her husband you know and th this was a while back and, and I could not believe what I heard coming out of her lips. She said, I just want to encourage every one of us to realize when we obey God, we're not doing it for God. We're doing it for ourselves because God takes pleasure when we're happy. That's the thing that gives him the greatest joy. So I want you all to know this morning just to do good for your own self. Do good because God wants you to be happy. When you come to church, when you worship Him, you're not doing it for God. Really, you're doing it for yourselves. Because that's what makes God happy. Amen? <laughs> if you haven't seen the video, you just did. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, right there. That, that's a load of garbage. It's, I think we could use stronger words than load of garbage, honey. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. It is. It is so... This is the problem with the church and people like the Osteens. Man-centered theology is all about us. So, But why is it blasphemy? Because we obey God for His glory and His glory alone. God takes pleasure in our holiness. His greatest joy is his glory. And he and doesn't found, share it with anyone. It's found in us when we delight in him above all else. When our desire and our hunger and our thirst and our, our delight is in him when we're pursuing his kingdom, his righteousness. Amen. We must decrease and he must increase. So David is showing us three things here about sin in this first two, the first two verses. The first one is transgression. And it's, it's a defiant, disobedient towards God. It's like revolting or being in rebellion against the Almighty, which actually, it says in 2 Samuel 15, I think, that it is, rebel it is witchcraft. Rebellion is as a form of witchcraft. Yep. And it is very serious. And idolatry is as stubbornness. And so we have transgression. Then he says sin. Sin means you're missing the mark of God's perfection. Either through acts of uh, commission or omission. And also we see the word iniquity in verse 2. The only word I can think of to describe iniquity would be um, crookedness, a crookedness, a deformity or a deliberate perversion, perversions, iniquity. It's like dark and twisted and it reminds me of a gnarly old tree, you know, just all gnarled and with knots on it and big warts and, you know, that, that iniquity. So all three types of sin and wrongdoing can be forgiven. Can I, can I just interject ahead, something yeah. here? I like the cross-reference that I have for verse 2 that Anne's talking about here. 
the cross reference is Second Corinthians five eighteen. Mm. Exactly what Anne's talking yeah. about. Yeah. And this is exactly what Victoria Osteen was not talking about. Mm. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is God. in Christ God was reconciling Hallelujah. the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us this message of reconciliation. Wow, that's a great verse. Great verse. It's the nail right on the head. Amen. Amen. That's why I wanted to read that, just so, because it, it goes so well with this verse 2 that yeah, 30, yeah. In, in, in Psalm 32. Yeah, we can, we can defiantly disobey. We can miss the mark. We can be inerrantly crooked you know because of our sin sinful nature the fallen nature in us even the smallest of sins are an affront to almighty holy god to the very biggest acts of rebellion they all offend the holiness of god when we think about our true condition we should be sorrowful you know we should be on our faces repenting and tears running down our face be broken before the lord you know run to the father in repentance the slightest grievance of the holy spirit should bring we should sense that conviction in us amen it's like oh 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 forgive me lord forgive me David also uses different words to express the fullness of our forgiveness. The word forgiven actually means to lift a heavy burden, to carry it away. It's being carried away. Our transgressions are taken away and lifted from us by who? By the Lord Jesus. And the word covered means um, to be concealed. It's covered. It's no longer seen. What is offensive to God is put out of sight. It's the idea of our sins are so covered up that they will never appear again. Anything that is put under the blood branches stays under the blood. And how does the Bible describe that? God's attitude towards that. Anything that is Hallelujah. forgiven. Everything he has forgiven. He puts it does as he, far as Does the, he put it as far east, away as the east or from the, from west? the west? In other words, infinitely. Infinitely. And, and the, th the third phrase here is does not impute iniquity in verse 2. And that word has a richness of meaning to it. We get the word reckoned from this term. This is the same word used in Genesis 15, 6, where God imputed righteousness to Abraham. He doesn't count branches. He doesn't count our sin against us. In their place, he's imputed the righteousness of another, Jesus' righteousness. We're covered over in his cloak of righteousness today. God erases our sin debt from the book as if it never happened. Romans 4 establishes that Christ's right standing before God is ours. Our sin is taken away by him. Sorry, can I just go back to Genesis, no, go ahead. Genesis 15? Just, yeah. just to clarify, I'm sure you all... You don't have to ask me. When, just, when, just when say Anne that. Was, when Anne was <laughs> talking about... The, when she Amen. says God imputed righteousness to Abraham, it wasn't done, God just didn't do it. Abraham mm. had to do something for it. And, mm. it's, and you go and read that, he said, right. it's because of Abraham's obedience, because obedience. He, he believed yeah. what God had told him without even seeing the results of it. He just believed him. And through that obedience, as you all know, yeah. that, was right, that was imputed to him as righteousness. Yeah. That's why this is important. If God tells yes. us, that we must we must forgive others commands. and obey his commands forgive others as he mm, forgives you forgive know ourselves. that's part of the lord's prayer <laughs> forgive our trespasses as we forgive those, those who, who trespass, trespass against, against us. us this is god telling us you need to be obedient and you're obedient you will be righteous right right that's what got abraham into the hall of 
faith. The Hall of Faith. <laughs> the Hall of Faith. And, he, and fame, because he's famous all over the world. And he's our greatest example. Mm. Him and King yes. David are the, our greatest examples of, of having righteousness imputed to you through obedience, no matter Amen. what you did. And Abraham was not a saint by any in the way we would think of saints, mm. as David was. And I think Anne mm. said earlier, and this is why I think David, most of the songs about forgiveness in the book of Psalms was written by David because yes, of his personal yes. experience. Right. God turned it around for good. Amen. Now, in the last part of verse 2, David says that God does all this, this for the one who, whose spirit is, there's no deceit found in them. Whose spirit is no deceit. And that doesn't mean someone, we don't have faults. We don't falter. We don't fall. You know, but it's talking about those who readily admit their sins. It's the idea of being genuine. It's, it's about being authentic, you know, not hypocritical. It means that we are not deceitful and we acknowledge our sin. So listen carefully to the, you know, um, the key to the Christian life is not our personal perfection but our regular repentance. It's not in how perfect we can do and in the we got to try and clean our lives up and, and all this stuff ourselves. No, we just need to recognize where we've fallen, where we've sinned, and we go to the Father and we say, Father, forgive me. You know, forgive me. Help me, Lord. Help me. Work your word in me. It's not a matter, you know, of trying to be perfect, but recognizing that we're not, and the Christ who is in us is the perfect one, right? Greater is he who is in us than he who is in this world. So if we're, our spirit, there's no deceit found in us. You know, we're not in the world. We're not doing worldly things in a continual, you know, then... It's, it's God's nature. We're, we're not perfect. We're not. And we are not perfect. I am not perfect. Just ask Richard. Wait a minute. Don't. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> she isn't perfect, Branches. I no. know you all think that, but she's no. not. No, I'm not. I'd be the first person. I am the chief of sinners. Hallelujah. Are you looking for a verse? Yeah, I'm still looking at it in First John. You all know that verse that that because it's something you said earlier about if we if we are faithful and or yeah. if we confess our sins one to another, God is faithful to cleanse and us just. of all un yeah. and just to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. There has to be action, the action of repentance, the yeah. fruits of repentance. Yeah. That's how that's how we are obedient to the word of God when we find ourselves in sin. Yeah. But I can't, it's in First John somewhere. And I'm Left to ourselves. I mean, man, we would mess everything up, right? Everything would be right in our own eyes. I remember back in the day when we were growing up in church, there was such uh, 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 an awareness of sin, such a, a hatred of sin. I mean... After the service, we would be all up at the altar, and I, I'm sure Ruth can uh, remember this as well. We'd be so grieved over it. They, you know, they there was a fear, such a fear of God. They ag agonized over their sin. You know, whenever they got lost, or or not lost, but angry, and they lost their temper. You know, or or any kind of slight. You know that they. Are, you know, they wouldn't even think they could take communion. They would be so convicted, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. How our consciences have been hardened. They would abstain from communion. I remember seeing this. And, and you would see uh, one or two people get up in the church, and they would go, you'd see them go talk to someone. And then they would be hugging, and then they would take communion. Be able to take you know, and that that is the right thing to Amen. do. They, they didn't they nowadays. People said. just mumble, you know, a quick a quick little half half sincere prayer, and they don't take it. 
It is serious. If we would examine ourselves. And things go on as usual. As Paul said. You know, and they take communion and things just go on as usual. You know, we try to justify it. We try to justify. We label, we put labels on our sin, right? We put other names on them to cover them up and to try and make our conscience not be so pricked. But be sure, the Bible says that your sins will find you out. Do we grumble? Do we mumble about our, our meanderings, like our excusing our sin? Are we being deceived by disobedience in our own heart? While I was preparing this message, the Lord was speaking to me. You know, on things in my own life. Too many words, speaking too many words. Like, and just sit and be quiet. Sit and be still before me. You don't always have to have an answer, right? She thinks she does. Sometimes I do. And I have to repent of that because when we're so busy talking, we're not really listening. And, and we're not listening for the Spirit to lead and guide us and to put His words in our mouth. So, and, and I was corrected on that. So we don't always have to, we have to hear from the Spirit. Hallelujah. It's time to get beyond our moral myopia that distorts the true it's a big view. Word, yeah, I was, yeah, myopia. yeah, yeah. Of ourselves. Like we get this distorted view of ourselves. And if you don't know what that word means, it, myopia means a uh, nearsightedness and it's oh. a it's a common vision condition i thought it i thought it was a country in africa no oh, okay no you learn something new every day it's not utopia it's myopia it's it's a common vision condition and where where uh, near objects appear closer but objects farther away they look blurry and it happens when the you know the shape of the eye or the shape of the certain parts of the eye cause light rays to bend inaccurately. So things seem all out of shape. And, and that's the same with our moral con condition. Sometimes we can have a myopia that distorts things, our vision. Mm -hmm. We don't see things clearly. Uh, we may think we're okay, but this is where you have to get in your closet and we have to seek the Lord. And say, Lord, show me my heart. I mean, if we're not real with God, David says, what will happen to us? In verse 3 and 4, can you read that again? Can you read that again? Huh. Uh -uh. Hallelujah. Where am I here? And it's easy to see it in someone else, right? If you're sitting in church and pastor's preaching a strong message, you know, coming against some things, and, and the first thing you're thinking up in your mind is, oh, wow, that's that's just like my husband, or that's just like my friend, or that's for, for, for so-and-so. But really, we need to take the word and apply it first to our lives. Amen? Wow. What? Just like my husband? Yeah. You've never done that? No, because I don't have a husband. You're, no. You're worse than unique. What? Picking on me like that. Aw, I baboo. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy upon me. Yeah. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I remember a story once. Uh, someone played a prank on someone else. These people and they they sent an anonymous note to each of them and, and it simply said well they make this very prominent men not just yeah, yeah. individuals these all are very well-known men and, and it said all is found out flee flee, <laughs> flee at once flee at once within 24 hours all these men left the country i mean that was pretty much exactly the picture described right here in proverbs 28 1 that we're going to read. The wicked man has fleas. Oh, no. No. That's not what it says. Well, that's what your note oh. says. But the wicked man flees, fleas. but no one oh. pursues. Oh. But the righteous are as bold, bold as, as a, a lion. lion. Are we skipping town? You know, 
Everything's been found out. Are we running away? What are we running from today? Are we hiding anything today? Instead of owning, owning our sin, is it owning us? Very, very important to, to ask ourselves, is there anything owning us? Is there any area in my life does the lack of forgiveness make us want to run? Verse 3 says that keeping silent about sin can also make you feel sick. It says, when I kept silent, my phone scrolled. No. My phone scrolled through my <laughs> you know? groaning all day long. Wow. Yeah. Okay. It's amusing speech to text, so it doesn't come out. My bones, you know, you, you, your bones rot. When you try to ignore iniquity, you know, when he tried to ignore his iniquities, his bones felt like they were decaying. Do any of us feel that way today? Maybe we have some newcomers here today. You know, the word, the word groaning was used to describe the roar of a wounded animal or the growl of a bear in Isaiah 59.11. Whenever you hear Isaiah 59, you should immediately be thinking about Isaiah first, or chapter, verse 2. Yeah, We've quoted yeah. it many times recently. And I'm going to quote this before I quote verse 11, because everything that follows verse 2 is a description mm -hmm. of what verse 2 is all about. But your iniquities have made a separation, separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. And then there's a whole description. All these verses are a description of yeah. sinful humanity, the things that we do. And we go to verse 11. Spider's webs, we, snake eggs. There's, yeah, there's, huh. there's, they hatch yeah, adder's eggs. eggs. They weave spider's eggs. There are webs not don't serve yeah. as clothing. Their works are works of iniquity, deeds of violence. Uh, justice is far from us. Yeah. And we can, when we get down to 11, they said, we all growl like bears. This is what Anne was talking about. We moan yeah, and yeah. moan like doves. We hope for justice, but, justice, <laughs> but there is none for salvation. But it is far from us. Because God has hidden his face yeah. because of our iniquities and sin. And it wasn't like one or two days of groaning for David. It was day after day after day. You know, he all day long, continuously, without stopping. But when we don't own up to our sins, our bodies revolt. You know, it's like a pendulum. But he knew where it was coming from. This weight upon yes. his soul. He knew where it was coming yes, from. Yes, but he was. He didn't the confess. Hand, he wasn't ready to to repent. But he knew it came from God. God's hand yeah. was heavy upon him. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of happiness, we experience the heavy heartaches. When we keep our mouths shut, our conscience just screams. You know, when we bottle up this this evil, our bones grow old. Proverbs twenty eight thirteen. He who conceals his sin, sin does, does not, not prosper. prosper. All these things will come upon you. If you ever wonder why are all these bad things happening to me, well, I think. A good idea would be to go in your closet and seek the Lord. Just take that time aside. Just seek the Lord and say, Lord, you know, is it me? Is it is it my flesh? Is it the enemy coming after me? What's going on? Is there something in my life? So I guess you could put it this way. We're only as sick as our secrets. Hmm. The secrets that we work so hard at concealing and this is what what's happening to David it's a good way of putting it you know he was trying to conceal it and, and all day long his bones and he was groaning and, and you know just all bottled up inside because it suppresses your nervous system as well you know everything in your body what did Jesus say about that Mm -hmm. All those things that are covered in the darkness shall be will be exposed exposed in the light. <laughs> yeah, the light of Christ, and that's why God. God sent the prophet His way, right to expose it. Everything will be revealed. So what if, you know, what if 
we've been concealing? What have we been concealing? What what is it that we're hiding in times, you know, in those we need to come clean. And it's time to come clean. God isn't messing around. Judgment begins in the house of God. He's been showing me that in prayer. That he's doing a shaking within the church today. The whole body of Christ. He's shaking up our foundation. He's trying to get out the dross. The dross in us. You know, uh, we can't be settled on our dregs. And that's just the process for, for purifying wine. You know when you, you you're making wine and you're tipping it from vessel to vessel, and you're taking it, you're pulling off the dross each time you pour that wine out. You take off the dross off the top, and it's the process for purifying it. That's what God's doing in our lives. You know He's He's purifying our lives, and and it's not easy for us to admit. You know it's not easy. It's, it's like the guy who goes into a store and, and asks, do you, do you have a card that, that stops short of saying, I'm sorry, yet vaguely hints of some wrongdoing? <laughs> you know, like he, he doesn't want to say, I'm sorry. He doesn't want to say, forgive me, I'm sorry. But it, it has to be just, but just a little bit in there. You know, that half sincere heart. We do this with God sometimes when we're not being specific about our sins. You know, do we fall on our knees? And we need to be specific when you are repenting. You before need God. To be before God. Then don't assume that God knows. He yeah. does know, but He, he wants you knows. to know. This is he part wants of the us process. to come to Him. Speak it out out of the abundance of the yeah. heart the mouth speaks. Yeah. So we continue in verse 4. For day and night your hand is heavy upon me. You know, even at night, David couldn't even rest from the cries of his conscience, from the conviction in his heart of the Holy Spirit. And the word heavy means to grievously afflict. God's hand, you know, conveying blessings can also bear down on us. God's hand can give us blessings or he can bear down on us. You know, and that heaviness. Hallelujah. And it's because, why, Branches? It's because he cares for us. He loves us. He loves us too much to let us settle on our dregs, you know, to keep living the way we're living. Back in the day, one of the bigger churches that we were in, I would notice a few, you know, people sitting in the front. Do you remember, like, yeah. Audrey and, and different people sitting in the front? You know, the type, those fiery ones, like, um, there were a few of them. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm thinking of a few right now, actually. And um, they would always sit near the front or the second row. And they would stand up every time the preacher would say something like, you got to quit your gossiping. You, and they'd go, yes, amen, pastor. Yes, amen. Preach it, pastor. You got to stop your lying ways. Preach it, preach it. They'd jump up and preach. And have, they have their hankies. You know, the ones with the white hankies? Like that. But as soon as they would say, the pastor would say, you got to quit your gossiping. You got to qu quit that, you know, just whatever. And, and there'd be silence. Speaking against your brother. There'd be yeah, speaking against, speaking against your brother, or or holding things in, and you know, whatever, meddling in other people's business. They they they'd be quiet, total quietness. And or I'm, they go, Amen. I guess. <laughs> I guess, and I'm sure they said to one another, "Well, he's done preaching. He's <laughs> now he's just." done his preaching and he's gotten to meddling <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah. sin shuts us up you know when we hear something we don't like we better examine our heart maybe it's something that's really in us maybe they got a point if we're getting all upset about something you know it's so easy for us to get upset with those who sin differently than we do 
Mm-hmm. You know, but it's so much harder when the Holy Spirit starts meddling in our lives, isn't it? And after David describes the spiritual drought and the burning in his bones, you know, he writes these words. He wrote this word, sila. You sila. see the word sila right after verse 4. And the word is used actually over 70 times in the Psalms. If you go back and you can count them. And I don't know ex- the exact meaning, but it may, I, since it is a, a, a masculine, you know, a musical, there's a musical title to the beginning of it. I, I kind of assume that that it, 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 it probably was a musical notation or something or more. That's like pause, the, pause, a pause. That's one of the views. That's one of the definitions that it's a musical term. Yeah. Remember, like, these these, these psalms, hymns, these they're... songs were sung in those yeah, days. Sung. We've lost some, most of the melodies, but they were actually sung. So so that sila kind of, it's it's like just stop right here and think, pause for a moment. Yeah, and it it, it could know? it could be much more than just think a about what term. what you've just stop. said. Stop. Stop in the music, yes. Yeah, stop in singing, but here's yeah. where you need to meditate on what you were like Anne said. Because he does sing. God does not want us to miss anything, and I think that's David's point by putting Selah in here. David doesn't want us to miss the point of how the Holy Spirit is mm. meddling, meddling in our lives not right sure now. I want to use the word meddling when it comes uh. to the Holy Spirit. He's, well, he's, he's, he's doing putting a lot. His, Meddling's he's kind of stirring negative things term, up. He's kind of stirring I, things I mean, up. I know what you mean. I hopefully yeah, every, yeah. you all know what she means. But it isn't meddling because we we tend to think of meddling as a very negative thing. That like get un, out of my un, business. An unwanted intrusion yeah, in your yeah. life. And and if you're well, in sin, that's exactly what it, what it the is. Holy Spirit becomes. Oh uh, yeah. An unwanted intrusion in your life. If you're not ready to lay it down. That's exactly right. If you're not ready. So after he talks about all the happiness and the forgiveness and the heaviness of sin, we see in verse 5, I have knowledge. Okay, can you read verse 5? I acknowledged my sin Sin. to you and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Yeah, so David is now, Selah. David is, now he's confessing his sin. He's not trying to conceal it. And the first thing he acknowledges is the obvious. He starts, you know, trying to to cover it up in a sense. He's he's like the prodigal son who had grown tired of living with the pigs. You know, he he's he's coming to God and he's he's starting to own up to it. Own up to his sin. And he's not, he's not coming to himself, as making, the Lord Jesus yeah, said. he's not making those excuses anymore. To confess literally means to say the same thing that God says about your sin. Until we say, God, you're right. It was wrong. It was sinful. I have sinned against you. Then we really haven't confessed. If we're not ready to confess, maybe we need a little more distress in our life. I mean, David finally did surrender. And I wonder if are we if there are areas in our life, are we ready to do the same thing as David did? And you notice that he takes personal responsibility by using personal pronouns. He says, my sin... He says that two times. My iniquity. My sin, my iniquity. Yeah, my transgressions. I will confess and my transgressions. Yeah, he repeats these three words for sins that were mentioned in in verse 1. He acknowledges his sin. He doesn't cover it up. You know, he doesn't cover up his iniquity. Psalm 51.3, for I yeah. know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. And there's something else that I noticed. He doesn't deny it. He doesn't minimize it. He doesn't blame the next person. He doesn't blame someone else. He just simply confesses to God. And it's not a mistake. It's not an error. He didn't have fall back into a 
lapse of judgment or anything. He sinned. He doesn't argue about what the meaning of is, is. You know, I think the greatest barrier to healing in our lives is us. It's not the person next to you, it's, it's me. I'm the greatest barrier. We would be healed a lot quicker if we, we just stop labeling our sin as something else. You know, to excuse well, our behavior. That's what the world would want you to do. That's where the, the subtlety of the enemy's attack yes. in our culture. They want to make, like, the sodomy. culture wants to make you a victim and say, it's not your huh. fault that you are a sinner. So you can't, you can't cover it up by, by other words, labeling it as something else. So do you know what our euphemism is? Do you know what euphemism is? Yeah. It's a polite expression used in place of words yeah. or phrases yeah. that might otherwise be considered harsh or unpleasant to hear. <laughs> and that's what sin loves. Sin loves to hide behind these euphemisms. Well, that's interesting. And what you are some of those? Hang on. That's okay. interesting you should say that. What is the very first glimpse we have of sin in the Bible? Hallelujah. The first reference to sin in the Bible. Hallelujah. Other than, and, and it isn't the eating of the fruit of the tree of God, the knowledge of good and evil. Remember, that's what God tells Cain. Mm -hmm. That sin is crouching by the, the door. door. It's hiding by the door. Mm -hmm. And it wishes to master you. But you must master it. So that's one of the hallmarks of our sins. It, it, like Ann says, it likes yeah. to hide. Oh, I just told a little white lie. No, I just sinned by lying to you. CMD. That is what we need to say. You know, oh, I just stretched the truth a little bit. Like the evangelistic, the evangelistic. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I just, you know, stretched it a little bit. No, I just sin by lying to you. Instead of saying, I just had a bad temper. You know, I, it, I think the correct thing to say is, I sinned against you with my words. Please forgive me. You know, it just, my emotions got away with me. You know, you know, no, I just sinned against you with my words. Instead of saying, you know, I just want to share a prayer request with you. The more honest thing is I just want to pass along some gossip. You know, in, or, in order to put someone else down. Like, do we do that? Like, instead of saying, you know, I had an affair. I, no, just say I committed adultery. And that's what the world labels things, you know. My mistress. You're married, but you have a mistress. Like, no, you're committing adultery. Just come right out with it and say it. Because that's what God would call it. Right. Until we get to the point where we're so afraid to sin, the fear of God is in us, you know, and suffer the consequences of, of that, we're not going to feel a deep conviction. And we have to be careful, too, that we're not in danger of um, hardening our heart. Right? Searing our conscience. That's right. And I know this sounds very blunt today, but this is the Lord severely, you know, dealt with me and, and spoke this to me. Very blunt. When you think about it. It's better to call sin what it really is. And why is that? Because there is a solution for sin. It's called forgiveness. We just went through the resurrection, you know, weekend and, and the crucifixion, the Palm Sunday, his triumphal entry. Uh, he, they saw him as a king, but their king went to the cross to why? offer forgiveness to cancel out that dominion of sin and until we acknowledge that we've what we've done is sinful 
we won't experience that freedom and that restoration and what all that Christ did on the cross. C confession is more than just informing God that we did something. You know, he, that, that we He sinned. already knows you've done something. He, he already knows. It also involves turning away. Instead of just confessing our sins, you know, we need to turn away from it, do a 360. When we mess up, Hallelujah. And reject it. And God will remove it. Amen. And he takes all our sin, iniquity, transgressions, and he puts it as far yes. as the east is from the west. He doesn't hold our sin against us if we confess. Amen. We don't, and we don't have to beg God. We don't have to keep coming back and begging and begging God, you know, to forgive us. Because he wants to forgive us. He invites us to forgive more than we want to be forgiven sometimes. You know, like, he's always there ready. We don't have to bargain with him or try to bribe him by promising, oh, I'll, next time I'll do much better. I'll do, or I'll do all these good works. You know, I'll do all these good things. We don't have to do penance for the bad things we've done. Amen? Amen. We don't have to do penance. No. That was a very large element in the medieval church. That's right. As part Remember of, their, they their, considered repentance. They would cut themselves. And they would flagellating Yeah, flagellating on themselves. Orders, and, monkish orders. Yeah. But God doesn't want that from us. No, he does not. He wants repentance of the heart, not of the body. Yeah. In Joel 2, chapter 2, it says, you know, rend your heart. And not your Not garments. your garments. Yeah. It's all a matter of the heart. And Anne says so, here we don't need to bake God cookies to, for, to ask where, for this where forgiveness. Where does it say right that? There. We don't have to bake God cookies to forgive. No, it said we don't have to bake. Bake God to forgive. I'm pretty sure it it's beg. I meant to say beg. Beg God. No, we do not. No. And the word salah is there so we pause. We we think. We don't rush past the beauty of having all of our sins forgiven. We just wait in his presence. We claim the promise of forgiveness for our sins. You know, we say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that I am forgiven. Thank you, Lord, for the promise of forgiveness. We become new in that area. The thing is, we can never get over God's grace. We should always be astounded and just in awe of his grace that he pours out upon us every day. That's why we use that adjective amazing in front of amazing the word grace in a grace. lot of our worship songs. Amazing grace. And in some ways, you know, I have to say, Lord, forgive me for taking things for granted, for taking your goodness for granted, for taking your grace for granted. Which you know? we do. And I, Lord, you have that. blessed us so much with so much. I mean, even the breath in our lungs comes from you, Father. I need forgiveness every day, every day, because I know the heaviness of sin. Maybe some y'all, maybe if, and I'm not saying this is it, it's something you have to bring to the Lord, but maybe some, some don't sleep well at night, because there are things weighing on you, you know. This is not a message of condemnation today. It's an invitation, you know, to lay those burdens down at the cross of Calvary. You know, and just that great exchange that was done at the cross. He became a curse so we could enter into the blessing of forgiveness, newness of life. We all fall short of the glory of God each and every day. And I am so grateful for the blood of Christ, for, for his invitation. And maybe someone here today isn't even saved. You just came across, God led, led you across this channel. And you're saying, what What are they talking about? Sin? God forgiving me? You mean I can have a relationship with God? 
I'm sinful? I've never heard this stuff before. Well, God wants you to know today, yes, you can be forgiven. We are all sinful creatures. That sin nature is in the world. It's in our hearts. That stain is there. And until we come to Jesus and we confess with our lips, we believe in our heart that he is the one that came, you know, to to die on the cross, to For make that, that, that exchange, you know. His, to deal with the sin we could yeah, not deal with. Yeah. Just ask the Lord today. Just say, yes, this is what I'm looking for. This freedom. This is why I feel so heavy and yucky and dirty and all this stuff in my life. Cry out to Jesus. Give your heart to the Lord. He's more than willing and just to forgive. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for this message. Yes, Lord. That you, you are so faithful, Lord. You're so faithful to us, Lord. You know, Lord God, everything that we need to hear in the season and the time that we need it. Yes, Lord you God. knew, Lord God, that I needed to hear this message for my life. And Lord, if I need to hear it, so many more in the body of Christ. Yes, Lord. Lord, Lord, I thank you for your amazing grace. I thank you for the cross, just as we sang earlier, Lord, for all that you did for us. Your amazing love poured out. Thank you, Lord. In the stripes that Jesus took for our healing, for our redemption. Lord, help us, Lord. Help us, Father, to just lay those burdens down. Lord Jesus, to come to you daily. Lord, and just have that conversation with you. Lord, we would search our hearts and allow you to search our hearts, Lord. If there's any hardened areas in us, Lord, Lord, give us that heart of flesh. Yes, Lord God. You're the potter. We are the clay. Mold and shape our lives, Lord, to be like yours. Help us to walk faithful to you and to persevere and to endure. Lord God, when temptations come our way, Lord, help us, Lord, by your Spirit to just you, cast them off yes, Lord. in Jesus' name, that our hearts would be filled with your truth and your word so we do not sin against you or our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes. Fill us with your love. May your truth motivate us, Lord, today to draw closer to you, to desire and hunger and thirst for your righteousness, your kingdom. And, Lord, it is for your name's sake that you may be glorified in and through our lives, oh, yes, Lord, you in your glorified. people, Lord. I pray this today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well... Thank you for joining us as yes. always today. Important message. As believers, we all need yes. an, another yes. pivotal reason why the Lord Jesus Came. died upon yeah. the cross. The, the whole concept of forgiveness, God's forgiveness, as we read earlier, uh, the ministry yeah, of reconciliation, yeah. that God was reconciling the world through Thank Christ, Jesus. that our sins and iniquity could be forgiven, yes. that we are no longer separated from God. Amen. Forgiveness is crucial to a, in a believer's life. Yes. We expect God to forgive us, we, and therefore we must forgive mm. others. There's, there's no way around it. Yeah. There's just no way around it. And it is very difficult for us mm. to do that in many cases. We can be prideful. We can be prideful, but we can uh, also just, be ex uh, so wounded yes. that in our pain and our, you know, we, we can't, we can't see, we feel like we can't do it. And you're right. You can't do it in your own strength. That's why you need the strength of the Lord Jesus. The Holy Spirit the in Holy our Spirit lives in your draws life us. To do what you cannot do. Yeah. And that is forgive someone that you, in your eyes, is unforgivable. And 
ourselves and ourselves that's why Sometimes you know the lord had to show me you know you can forgive yourself and that's right for those things that you did i think that's probably the thing you that, know, that, that wow. most people struggle that was with. so free forgiving yourself starting with yeah. forgiving yourself on some of these things yeah you know we're, we're, we're you know we'll acknowledge god forgives sin and of course we'll forgive people who sin against us but do we forgive, do we forgive do we ourselves? ourselves and that's yeah. always a struggle for everyone yeah but there's now, therefore, no, no condemnation, condemnation for those who are in, in Christ, Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, have a blessed day. Go out in the power and the oh, might of the Lord, power. in the strength of the Lord. And remember, you are his flowering branches because yes. you have stayed in him. And he abiding is the vine. Him. He is abiding in the vine. The vine who gives us our strength. We are abiding in the vine. Yes. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow, I don't know what Annie's going to teach again tomorrow. Don't know what she's talking about. But I don't know. I'm Whatever sure the, I'll pray about However it. However the Holy Spirit moves. Mm. Join us tomorrow. Amen. We love you, dear branches. Love you. Have a great day. Amen. Lay your burdens down At the feet of Jesus Lay your burdens down At the feet of my Lord there is no problem that he can't solve Lay your burdens at the feet of Jesus said he would never leave you Even in your time of trouble you can turn to him And lay your burden down He will hear your heart's cry Desperate hour you can turn to him He's waiting with open arms Lay your burdens down At the feet of Jesus Lay your burdens down At the feet of Jesus None other has the joy and peace that he gives to me. Turn to him today, no problem is too large, that he cannot solve it all, he understands. No life it is not easy. I still love you